Welcome to another edition of Wings Weekly, brought to you by Buffalo Wild Wings. Jay Klein Connect here, along with head coach Steve Jennings, of course. Uh, coach, a weekend down in uh, Mason City, in, uh, taking on the North Iowa Bulls. Win on Friday. Uh, got behind early for 49 seconds in. They score, uh, but a strong second period, and then a really good third period. Um, Ends up, obviously, as, a, as I mentioned, a, a victory, but um, had to come from behind for that one. Um, outshot 35-26. The PK was 6 of 6. That was a, certainly a, a bright spot. Uh, power play struggled a bit, 0 of 6. And uh, what um, break that game down for me, if you would. Yeah, you know, I, the first, first road game of the year, right? I think it was uh, our start was certainly interesting, right? I think we left a lot on the table there in the first 20 minutes and got back in the locker room and, Made some adjustments, talked about getting back to what we had talked about in terms of shutting down, things we didn't want to have happen that we allowed them to do a lot through the first period. And thought we made some good adjustments and, and great pushback from the from the boys. I was really happy with that. Yeah. And the Amel goal to, to bring it to within one right, you know, to answer. We've talked about that on a handful of occasions. Uh, to be able to do that, and it uh, keeps the bench alive, and you know keeps, uh, keeps everybody's chins up, so to speak. Um, but again, talking about the the penalty kill there on Friday night was really strong. You as a staff like that. Yeah, absolutely. It was, uh, you know, we the special teams game, especially in the early part of the year, is so important, right? Because it can it can inflate or deflate you. Mm -hmm. And um, and you know while we're working through transition and getting really comfortable, it's we're going to have nights where one side's really good and one side's maybe struggling a bit. And, and you know, I think having the kill be the stronger of the two, you know, predominantly is going to be our best best opportunity. And, you know, that was good. I was happy with, with that. But we certainly want both sides to pick up and continue to, to push. Sure. All right. Well, moving on to Saturday. Down early, 3-0. Uh, ends up being a loss 6-5, but you did come back and take the lead there for a while, 4-3. Uh, big game for Jackson Yee. Uh, on Saturday night, you were outshot 33-30. The PK, again, perfect, 3-3. Three of three, uh, And the power play, 0-2. Oh, um, how about Saturday's game? What did you think? A oh, big weekend for Jackson Yee. He yeah, was, that's true. He, was, he had a big weekend. I was really proud of him and thought he thought he showed some real veteran leadership there. So so that game Saturday, you know, the the – Giving up an early early goal like that and then giving up two more on top of it really kind of put us behind. I was happy that the bench didn't deflate and the kids found a way to push back. The resilience that this team is starting to develop is really good. It's an important part of a team and finding that way to be able to push through when it's going well and then fight back when it's not going well yeah. and do it in the right way. I was really happy with that, right? And we, so, you know, the, again, we, we talked, I think, last week about us needing to learn how to play confidently with the lead and we would put ourselves in that spot again here this week and kind of let, let them back into the game where I thought we had started to really take control and we made it interesting yeah. ultimately paid the price but we'll get better and I, and I think you know uh, anytime you score five goals in a game I think your odds are you're gonna win that game but they scored six so mm -hmm. Well, overall on the weekend, I mean, you mentioned it, Jackson Yee, strong weekend. Um, the, the kill was strong all weekend. What, what as a staff do you take away from the both games, the, the bulk of them? Like, is there anything that you see that you, that you feel like you need to improve upon or maybe something that really kind of stood out, like, for example, the penalty kill that was a, a, a bright spot? Yeah, the kill, the kill was a bright spot. It's been, been pretty bright for us since we started, which is good. Um, I think... What the group is starting to show is their ability to process what we're trying to teach and implement it, right, which is really good. And so while we're trying to make some changes, even changes on the fly, it's good. The weekend really also allowed us to answer a few more questions that we have about our manpower and staffing and how we want to handle different situations and games. And, you know, so we're, we're really kind of pretty much down to where we need to be roster wise at this point, which is great. Um, and again, the weekend helped us with that. Right. But um, that resilience that the kids are learning, that's a, a big part for me in terms of takeaway from the weekend. Right. Okay. Uh, let's see. Right now, uh, the Austin Bruins are on top of the Central Division with nine points. Then it's North Iowa with eight. The Wings are four and two with eight. St. Cloud with six and four games played, or with four games played. Minot has five points at Bismarck. Yet to find the win column, they have zero. Uh, this weekend, a big weekend for the Aberdeen Wings, a home opener here at the ODI Center against the St. Cloud Norsemen who come to town after a sweep of Bismarck there uh, in St. Cloud. What have you seen of the, of the Norsemen? What do you know about this team? Yeah, I just started watching video here um, right before we get started. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I, I think they're, they have 
a good group of kids that are all obviously firing on all cylinders here early in the year. And I think they've had a little bit of the benefit where maybe their game counts down a little bit. So they may be coming in from a different rest perspective here. Um, but I think they're, it's going to be a game. Our division, as I look at it, our division is going to absolutely be a gunfight yeah. the entire year. It's going to be, it is going to be a typical year in the Central Division. I don't think anyone's going to run away with it. I think we're all going to be battling each other, and we're going to see weekends like we saw this weekend here. Yeah. Well, and I've, I've heard that from uh, other other teams, other staff, uh, you know, just a lot of different people, actually, that have said that they really feel like the Central is going to be really competitive this year. Um, does that change anything or does that do anything for you guys as a team? I mean, because oftentimes I know I've talked with coaches in the past when they say, you know, that when the division is competitive, it makes you overall a better team rather than beating up on a team that's struggling or whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah. Does it, do you feel like it makes you better or better yeah. opportunity? Yeah. Ab absolutely. It makes everything counts. Mm -hmm. There's not going to be the week where you know somebody's coming in and they haven't, they've gone 0 and 40 and you're just going to walk through them, right? So, Every week in the Central Division is always an important week, right? right? And, and I look at it, this, this year is no different. And I think, you know, as we're looking at the early starts here, everyone's going to be, you know, every, every game is important. And these early games, they, they come back to bite you in, in, in February and March, yeah. right? So we want to get, get points where we can and, and build where we can. And I think everyone's after that same thing as well. Without a doubt. All right. Well, you mentioned uh, with the Norsemen, they, uh, they return a bunch of players, too. So they've got, you know, some pretty good veteran leadership on that team and a lot of skill there, too. What do you as a, as a team, what do you feel like you've got to do to be successful this weekend? Yeah, um, probably sound a little bit like a broken record, right? I, I think when we are playing in our game to the best of our ability, mm -hmm. we kind of answer all the questions, right? And I, and I think when I look back at our start here over the weekend, I think we didn't start the right way. So if we get a fast start, I think we're going to be good. And, and, and a fast start at playing our game, not letting somebody else come in and dictate the tempo and the pace and, and take the play to us. I thought this weekend we chased the game too early, yeah. and, and we need to, we need to kind of take that out of what we're doing right now. Okay, well, how uh, uh, do you start to ensure strong starts? Is there something that you can do prior to the game or whatever to get these guys, uh, I, mean, I would think playing at home and coming through that tunnel would, you know, would help, right. but but uh, you know, and of course, it's early on. But that you know, over the over the course of years, you know, I've seen that can be a problem. Where teams, yeah. for whatever reason, they don't start well in the second, or they don't start well in in the first, or whatever it is. Is there an answer? Uh, I think for I'll speak for all coaches. If we all had the answer to that, none <laughs> of us would be where we are, right? right. I think um, no. I, I think for a lot of the, a lot of these guys, they're learning how to play junior hockey. Right. Mm -hmm. We this is a younger team than we've seen in a long time here. Mm -hmm. Right, and and so I think for some of these guys, it's about learning to get that going, and and uh, and and really just get back at it. And and even some of the older guys that we had didn't play a lot of hockey last year. Right. So for a lot of guys, it's really just getting back into the rhythm. Um, I think as we're we're going through, we're starting to see better prep coming from the guys and better um, awareness of the importance of those first few minutes. Right, and and I think so. I'm confident we'll learn from that and. And improve there. Well, and as you know, you kind of mentioned, we talked about briefly over the weekend, there's a couple of guys on this team that didn't play at all last year. Right. And so that is, you know, a kind of relearning. Uh, I can definitely see where that would be a, a rhythm, a scheduling, all that kind of stuff. It's kind of off in some cases. Right. So yeah. let's see where that would be. All right. Well, coach, that's about all I've got for you. Uh, uh, nice job on the win there and the split down in Iowa. First road games, like you said, road games are always tough. Uh, but uh, home opener coming up. Good luck against the Norsemen. All right, great. Thanks, Jay. All right, folks, we'll return with our second portion of Wings Weekly coming up after this. We raise the bar on bar food with sandwiches, tenders, and... There's more where this <laughs> came from. To the greatest of all times. Wigs Weekly continues, and as usual, the second portion shows uh, of the show, I should say, as a player featured. And this time, it's Jacob Basse. Jacob, thanks so much for coming on the show. Thanks to you for uh, asking me to come out. Yeah, can you t help me out with where you're from? I yeah. know Quebec, Canada, <laughs> but I've struggled with this a little bit. It's yeah. Longueuil. 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 Yeah. 
Okay, I need to make some uh, pronunciation marks on that <laughs> thing. That Longueuil, Quebec, Canada, which is actually a, a pretty big city. Like yeah, 290,000. Yeah, exactly. We're pretty big, and we're right on the south shore of Montreal. So we just had to take the bridge, and uh, we're straight down to Montreal. And so, yeah, pretty big city. I'm pretty used to like big cities and a lot of people. So. It's kind of different, but like it's my third year junior, so right now I'm pretty used to like smaller cities and right. uh, smaller communities, but I love it. It's it's awesome. So kind of a suburb of Montreal then? Yeah. Okay. Well, and you, and you mentioned it, uh, you you spent some time in the BCHL, but most recently in the AJ with uh, the Whitecourt Wolverines. Mm -hmm. So uh, you're, you're a little bit more acclimated, I guess, to a community the size of Aberdeen. Yeah. You, so you had a little totally. bit of a buffer, kind of, a little a little uh, warning to get used to it. What yeah. were your first impressions of Aberdeen when you got here? Oh, uh, it's amazing. First, I got here, there was like, there were people at the airport just waiting for me and just like cheering on me because I was a new wing guy. And uh, <laughs> yeah, it was amazing. My bullets were the first day. It was just, it was just awesome. Like, they're just like welcome me so like a warm welcome mm -hmm, mm -hmm. in their house and yeah everyone in the community I just everyone every time I see uh, new people in the community they're just they're so excited to see me and see the other guys and you know so far the all the boys in the in the locker room they're just they're great players and they're great human beings and I think that goes far in the season yeah for sure we're gonna get to that actually I'm gonna ask you a little bit about the chemistry in the locker room and stuff uh, but first, I wanted to get to your first goal as an Aberdeen wing. You've got one goal and four assists early in the season, obviously. But um, got a goal down in, uh, in North Iowa there in Mason City. How did that feel for you? feel great. I uh, finally had my goal. I was waiting for that one for uh, since the beginning. And, uh, you know, it was... Uh you know, it was a tough goal because like we were losing obviously, but like it felt good, like bring back the energy on, mm -hmm. in the game. And I really thought we were gonna come back that game. Like, you know, it was five, six, and there was like 40 seconds left in the game. So I, I was sure we were gonna come back, but unfortunately just about bad bounce at yep. the end. So yeah, it's uh, it's tough, but uh, you know, it was uh, it's fun always got your first goal. It just gives you energy for the next game after that. It just gives you confidence. Yeah, confidence, big thing for sure. Um, how would you describe your style? Are you a, a, a kind of a, a playmaker or are you a goal scorer? Or what, yeah, what is... I'm kind of, uh, I like what uh, Coach Jennings actually said. I'm kind of a Swiss knife. I can j just do both and mm -hmm. just make plays and score goals. And I can also play a little bit of defense. So, yeah, I kind of, uh, I'm kind of be all in between those two. And, uh, yeah, I'm, I'd say I'm a pretty fast player. Uh, it's going to use the speed. Sure. to like go around defense and the, you know uh four check on the other team so yeah that's kind of my style i'm trying to bring to the team so i have a positive impact on it excellent well i i know i i noticed early on and i mentioned this even in the broadcast that uh, there was a, a former wing uh that wore the number 19 that was an excellent penalty killer and uh would always you know the pressure he put on it ended up turning pucks over and going off on breakaways in fact he ends up being the all-time shorthanded goal scorer holds that record for the wings mm -hmm. and i saw you on the kill and i'm going this looks pretty <laughs> familiar actually and yeah. you know you, you put a lot of pressure on and you got opportunities where you're breaking pucks loose and stuff and so i can see where that speed comes in handy there too um i wanted to talk you mentioned uh, a little bit about the locker room but before we get there when did you start i can imagine being a uh, canadian you start pretty early i would i would guess but yeah. when did you first start skating and kind of walk us through how you got to be at aberdeen wing i started first skating at five or six years old i was just going at the outside rink uh, mm -hmm. uh with my dad and uh yeah it just came naturally i just started loving uh skating and just hockey just came with it like it just yeah. it was my sport and i just watched a bunch of canadians just home and uh, i was just a dream for me to play hockey and you like play professional at some point and so yeah through my uh five to like uh i'd say 15 years old i was playing like uh, for my city and stuff mm -hmm. and then uh went to prep school decided to go to prep school to have uh to go my ncaa path start and uh yeah i went to prep school in bishop and i i loved it like uh uh, boarding school it was a boarding school so we had okay. to stay there and sure. uh so it was, it was my first time away from home it was kind of hard at the beginning and also with the barriers langer uh language barrier right you know i speak i started speaking english like uh i'd say four years ago so it's pretty hard like manage the french and english like yeah. you know thinking and stuff like that and talking so yeah it was pretty hard but uh i got pretty used to it and uh yeah i'd say i'm pretty good right now i'm still figuring out some slang and some <laughs> stuff when people are talking accents it's pretty hard for me yeah, right now yeah. so yeah and then uh yeah i went to prep school then my first year junior in vancouver loved the temperature there it was awesome oh, yeah. beautiful 
people were amazing too. It was kind of like a, you know, really relaxed kind of community and uh, I really loved it. And then uh, White Court spent like two months there. Uh, unfortunately, because of COVID, I only had to play seven games and then it was a no brainer uh, to come to Aberdeen after that. Just when I saw like what they did last year and like every, everything, the, the community, the coaching staff, the facilities is just, it's the best you can get in law, I think. And uh, yeah, it was a no brainer for me to come to Aberdeen. Excellent, I'm glad to hear it. All right, um, you mentioned uh, the locker room. What is, what is the chemistry like in this locker room right now? Do you feel like it's a pretty tight knit group or, or is, you know, there are some guys that are still kind of finding their way? I think there's still some guys trying to find their way, especially younger ones, because it's their first year playing juniors or so yeah, they have to kind of get acclimated to the locker room. Yeah. So, but I'd say we're pretty, we're pretty tight in, yeah. the, in the locker room and uh, we know how to have fun and we know how to, when, when we have to focus. And uh, yeah, so far the group of guys we have in the locker room is amazing. I have nothing to say. I have everyone in the locker room is a great human being. And yeah. that, I think that's the most important thing when you have a team, when you build a team, is to have the best group of human beings. And so, yeah, so far it's been, the locker rooms is, is Awesome. All right, great. Well, and like you said, that's oftentimes the foundation of a team is the, is the character of them. Yeah. Um, if you had to, to pick one player out in this locker room that's kind of a class clown, that's a jokester, who would it be? I would say probably Cade yeah, Nilsson. That's what I figured. He's probably the funniest one to get in the group. He's just... He just has no filter and just say anything that goes in his mind. And, you know, he's a pretty funny guy. So, yeah, I'll have to go with Cade. I kind of expected that, but I thought maybe there would be a, a curveball thrown my way there. Um, here, just kind of a goofy question here. Would you rather have the ability to fly five miles per hour? I'm not sure how many kilometers an hour that is. but I would say 10. Okay. Or run 100 miles per hour, which I do know is 160 kilometers yeah. per hour. But anyway, would you rather be able to fly slowly Ooh. or run really fast? I'd have to go with fly yeah. because I already like I already know how to uh, run fast, so I would get the flying part to my game, and you know just you know being around to see the city from up top, yeah. Yeah. And, you know just being doing something that no one can do. It would be awesome, I think. Well, I think so too. I think that's that's definitely what I would go with because that's uh, <laughs> not only the scenery and everything would be awesome, but then you have no barriers, no boundaries. Yeah. You can't you can fly over water or whatever. So totally. that's that's cool too. All right. Uh, well, you've got St. Cloud uh, coming in here after a, a sweep of Bismarck in there for the Norsemen. Your guys' first home game, yeah. uh, is, is there getting to be a little excitement to, to have There's that There's a game? lot of excitement in the locker room right now. And yeah. like, as I'm talking, I'm just really excited for Friday night. And it's going to be an amazing, like, an amazing game, I think. Like, I've been seeing videos from the guys and, you know, on YouTube and stuff from the home opener of the Aberdeen Wings. And, it looks electric in the yeah. stands, and I'm just so excited to play that game and be able to play here with the Wings fans. Well, I hope uh, hope we'll have a good crowd. I know oftentimes early in the season it's a little tough because high school football kind of competes yeah. with it and stuff, but uh, I know that we've got some very, very passionate fans waving flags and uh, ringing cowbells and all that kind of stuff, so I'm excited for you guys to experience that. What do you know about the Norsemen? Do you, do you, do you, as a team, I know I talked with Coach Jennings, obviously they're starting to break down film and stuff, and you guys yeah. will work on, the, on some uh, keys and stuff as the season, or excuse me, as the week goes along. Um, but as a team, have you guys talked at all about what you might need to do against the Norsemen? Not, so far we haven't really talked about St. Cloud so far. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd say we're just gonna have to play our game and you know, we're gonna have a lot of games against them this year anyway. So yeah. uh, we'll just work our hardest right now at the uh, home opener and just try our best and we'll see what happens. But I'm, I'm confident we can beat this team and any team in, the, in our division right now. We're so far, as we've seen in the, in the latest game, I think we haven't saw our full potential yet. And uh, I really think we're gonna have a special year this year again. Yeah. Well, excellent. Glad to hear that. And I know a lot of Wings fans that are watching will be glad to hear that, too. Well, Jacob, that's about all I've got for you. I appreciate you coming on, though, and uh, you're letting us, us get to know you a little bit and let the fans get to know you a little bit. Awesome. Thank you very much. You bet. Well, folks, the Wings host their home opener this Friday and Saturday, October 1st and 2nd, against the St. Cloud Norsemen. Friday, the doors open at 530. Puck hits the ice at 715. 
Cashway is the corporate game sponsor for Friday's game and swing out for a special banner unveiling at the ODI Center as well. Saturday, October 2nd, doors open at 5.30, puck hits the ice at 7.15. $15 corporate bar stools are available. Call Aaron at 605-380-5852 and a post-game skate with the wings. So come on out, bring your skates. Even if you don't, walk on out, get some autographs, talk with the players. Season tickets and corporate night sponsorships are available for the 2021-22 season. Call Aaron at 605-380-5852 for more information. And don't forget, Wings Weekly is now a podcast. Find the audio for this season's episodes on Spotify, Stitcher, or iHeartRadio. And for all the latest news and information on the Wings, visit AberdeenWings.com or follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and on Instagram. Once again, Jacob Basse, I appreciate you coming on. And uh, great uh, great job on that. Uh, your first goal, I'm sure there'll be many more coming. And good luck against the Norsemen. Awesome. Thank you very much. You bet. All right, folks, that'll wrap up this week's Wings Weekly.